The title of my talk today is Bring It On. You all good with that? Yeah. Bring It On. So we're talking about a lot of things here. And um, go to the next slide. Here's Margaret's lyric. I'm surrendering to this unyielding bliss. Yes, universe, bring me more of this. Great lyric, right? So here's what this lyric says in a, such a science of mind way. First of all, you do have to surrender to the fun. You have to be willing, Eric, to have fun. You have to decide to have fun. You have to make a decision that fun is there to have. You have to be willing to surrender, right? I'm surrendering to this unyielding bliss. First, you have to understand the universe is nothing but joy and love and creativity. We think the universe is everything going on in the world today. And that, unfortunately, can be very depressing. Certainly in the face of what we're looking at right now. And we can't turn any channel and get away from it. So. We have to understand that if this universe is nothing but you unyielding bl bliss, fun, joy, creativity, that's where it's constantly taking us and going, we have to be willing to say, yes, universe, bring me more of this. And, you know, coming, coming into this month, so this month is, our theme is fun. I made up this theme, I don't know when, sometime in May probably. I could not have known that we would be living in an atmosphere and a consciousness in the United States of what we're all facing right now. And I'm not here to depress us or to take us into some kind of energy that is down or, or, or negative. Because frankly, I want to do the exact opposite. I know what's going on. You know, I know what's happening in this country, in this world. I see it. I get it. I don't think anyone in this room is shielded from what has happened, the shootings that have gone on in this country. But simultaneously with that, because I had to ask myself, did I pick the right theme for this month? Was fun, is it gonna seem shallow to be talking to everybody about, you gotta have fun in the midst of people having such horrible experiences? Yes, it's the exact theme. It is the absolute right theme. We have to be able to consciously understand what's going on and in the face of it, still know that there is unyielding bliss because that's the spiritual truth of what is going on. And if you can take your mind and make yourself consciously aware that no matter what this thing we call God, love, creativity, does not get tampered with at all, regardless of what human beings do, now you're in a great position to live your life fully out loud. I can still be part of the solution. And uh, trust me, there are many solutions I want to be a part of in this country. I can be a part of the solution, but at the same time, I must be part of the truth, the spiritual truth. And so I had to ask myself, what was I going to talk about today? I mean, it's funny because Reverend Tiffany, when she, when, I, when she took over last week, in the midst of all of this, you know, she, why don't you text me something like, thanks, this was the perfect time for me to have to take over. And I said, no, it is. Have at it. Any minister that has to get up and talk about what's going on in the world when something so tragic is going on, it's a difficult talk to give because you don't want to just talk about the negative. And I'm not here today to talk about the negative, and that was all I'm going to say about what's been going on in the world, other than the fact that we must be willing to not lose faith in the truth as we're looking at something called the relative facts. And that's really all I want to say about that because Groucho Marx said, if you're not having fun, you're doing something wrong. And that's the truth. If you're not having fun, you are perhaps getting involved with all of this over here. It's your mind. You get to decide where you're going to put it. You get to decide what you're going to focus on. And I'm talking about focusing on, not understanding something. I see what's going on, but I'm not going to get caught in it. I'm going to do what needs to be done and then move over here to where the light, where life is constantly unfolding brilliantly, perfectly, blissfully. So I love that. If you're not having fun, you're doing something wrong. And I think what that really means for me is if you're not having fun, you're not using your mind correctly. You're just not. 
if, <laughs> if you're not having fun, if you're not enjoying your life, then you've made some decisions maybe. And trust me, you have. You have decided to. You've made some decision that's not allowing you to have fun. How many of you have ever, raise your hand, if you've ever taken a job that was not fun? We've all had, oh, Carolyn, never? Wow, come on up here and give this talk. (laughs) Most of us, except for Carolyn, most of us have taken jobs that weren't fun. The question is, do we leave it? And I'm gonna tell you a a funny story about me. Um, So I took a job once to be a pizza boy, pizza man boy. I was like 20. And my job was to work at Pizza City in Philadelphia and make pizzas. Well, A, I don't like pizza very much. B, um, have you ever had to make a pizza? Have you ever had to make like 200 a night? Yeah. First, you got to do that dough stuff that they teach you. And I could never get the dough to be what it was supposed to be. Then I would forget to put the cheese. I I was terrible at it. And I really did not like it. But the owner was a friend of my father's, and he couldn't fire me. He wouldn't fire me. I just kept going, he's got to fire me. I'm terrible at this. He's going to fire me. And he wouldn't fire me because of my father, and my father said I couldn't quit. I was really stuck. So what do you think I did? Margaret just got it. I got sick. I just got sick. Now, now I go, I decided to get sick, but I got sick and convinced my parents that I had an allergy to, to tomatoes. <laughs> I did. I, I did. I was like saying, them, guys, I'm, I, it's the tomatoes in the sauce. So unless you find me, a, there was no such thing as a vegan and tomatoes are still vegan. So that wouldn't work. Right. So I got sick and said it was an allergy to tomatoes. I do not have an allergy to tomatoes. I have an allergy to red onions, which probably is not real either. So, if you have decided along the line somewhere that something's not fun and you have not taken yourself out of it, there's a quote that I use all the time. If I can't put my heart in it, I need to take myself out of it. Right? If I can't put my heart in it, I need to take myself out of it. So this month is an entire month for you to really figure out, am I having fun in life? Am I having fun with what I'm doing? Next slide. Dale Carnegie said, people rarely succeed unless they have fun in what they're doing. Just so you know, I love being a minister. I absolutely love it. I love giving talks. I love running churches. I love counseling. I love every aspect, almost, of running and being a minister. There are some political parts of being a minister in, in the world that I'm not so crazy about, but I kind of deal with those lightly, apparently gaily as well. <laughs> well, it is Gay Pride Weekend, after all. Uh, I had this shirt to wear for Gay Pride today that would have shocked you all. It was fabulous, and I didn't have time to iron it, so I didn't wear it. Maybe I'll wear it next, next time. So, if you can't put your heart in it, take yourself out of it, because you're not going to succeed. And I don't mean you're not going to succeed at writing an Oscar-winning movie. I mean you're not going to succeed at living. That's the most important part. You're not going to succeed at enjoying your life, as Thomas Troward says, right, Tiffany? The only purpose in life is to enjoy it. You cannot succeed in life unless you are having fun living it. So on a scale of 1 to 10, just yell out the number that you think you have in terms of having fun. Yell it out. Anybody say a one? Thank God. Anybody say a two? Three? Four? (laughs) Did you? (laughs) Wait, I got to do what you just did. I said four, and she went. (laughs) And yet, interestingly enough, Karen Wright, you may think you're a four at having fun, but you are a gazillion at making a difference in the world. Now you just have to figure out how do you make a difference in the world and have fun? (laughs) Yes. Anybody a five? Really? Well, that's good. You're halfway there. Anybody a six? Good. Seven? Okay. Good. Seven. Margaret. Really? Okay. Eight? Am I being judgmental? Yeah. Eight. Nine? Who was, t- who was a ten? Well, two hands went up. You're a ten. Marilyn Murphy. Wow. Adam? Okay, good. 
Good, okay. So now you know. Everybody should be gearing themselves, Eric, towards a 10. And that just means you just need to be conscious, or as Eric says, you need to make a decision. So it's all about perspective. Really, it's just your perspective. Because your five may be somebody else's 10. Karen writes four is probably many people's 10. I mean, think about it. It's all perspective. We can all go bowling, and there will be a lot of numbers in those fun scale, in that fun scale, based on the perspective you have about it. As opposed to what Eric said, which is the truth, they should all be tens. If you've decided to go bowling, you should be a 10 at going bowling, period. Or don't do it for God's sake, right? <laughs> if you've decided to marry this person, then have fun with them. Don't torture them for 40 years. Just saying, if you, <laughs> if you have decided to do anything in life, if it does not serve you in some way, take the decision back. Don't do it. So I decided to go to Guatemala years ago when Scott and Jose came to church one Sunday and said, we just found this orphanage in, in Guatemala. We'd love to get the church involved. And we started going every year, except for the COVID years. So. We just got back, and a bunch of us went down, and people have said, was it fun? And I had to really think about that, because it was, was it fun? Yes. Was it challenging? Yes. Was it sometimes really exhausting? I, it's, there, there are times when, in Guatemala, I, I didn't know I could feel that tired where I would literally lay down in a disgusting piece of concrete with dirt everywhere and just go, I just need to rest for a minute. Until, of course, the ants came on me and I jumped up. <laughs> and suddenly I had energy. Yeah. Or, or Kevin, in the, uh, you all heard this story, Kevin painting in the kitchen and coming across a tarantula about this big. Literally. He would tell you if he were here. Um, he's exhausted. Uh, <laughs> No, he was in, and I, I, we could hear his scream. He, he said a word we won't say here, but he said it about 30 times, right? Who was in the kitchen with him when that happened? You were, yes. It was like, nah, nah, and it was this high pitch scream. And all that poor little tarantula did to him was climb out of its hole to show him that he had painted one of its legs green. <laughs> because, of course, someone took a picture of the tarantula, and I was like, it's a colorful tarantula. And Kevin's like, I painted the leg. I, I said, well, that's why it came out. It didn't come out to kill you. It came out to say, don't do this again. And then it went back in. And, and it's probably still there. Probably still has a green leg. Who knows? But was that fun for Kevin? It was his decision to make it not fun. That's all I'm going to say. So... I have some pictures <laughs> to show you. you. When you see Kevin next, you just have to say the word tarantula to him. He will go on for 10 minutes about that experience. Yes. So here are some pictures. Now, I want to show you this. If you look closely, you'll see my daughter's name, Nora R.H., 2017. So in 2017, um, we brought her and Rachel Bork to uh, Guatemala and a bunch of other uh, young adults were there and they all went into this art room and painted uh, that's uh, hoy es un dia perfect para ser feliz I have no idea what that says and it, today is a great day to be happy and Nora wrote that so it was great it's always great to go back and find these things next so this is what it looks like when you get off the boat this is the welcoming area it goes downhill from there. Once you reach there, it goes downhill in, in, a, in a relative way. But, but in a emotional way, it goes uphill. It gets more expansive because eventually what you see, this was the first picture I took when I got there. I was like, yep, this is what I remember because then the kids come out. Next picture. Look at these faces. And they all want you to take pictures of them. They just love it. Um, next picture. There's Kevin and Lisa Carey's hat. <laughs> Kevin, I took this picture because there were all these kids just huddled around these guys. And um, just look at Kevin's face. You want to talk about having fun? 
I want to talk about joy and Margaret's song, service. I want to be in service. When you're in service with all of your being, your being just glows. Next. So this is a picture of a volcano and palm tree that Rachel Bork painted in 2017. And you can see the R of her name all the way on the bottom right. It's there. Can you see it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go, little R. I just wanted you guys to see that so that another Bork was part of today's service. <laughs> yes, and next. So this little boy, they were all supposed to do pictures of um, people. And he reminded me of my story about when we were supposed to do self-portraits and I painted an elephant. That's kind of what this kid reminded me of. And I was so excited by it. And he was so excited that I was excited by it. I took a picture of it. And then I asked him, what is it? What's it a picture of? And he said, you. I still was very excited for him. <laughs> Next. So there they all are, painting pictures and doing these, these paintings. And Lisa Carey was actually in charge of this. She's, there she is right there up in the corner. She, she took over that arts and crafts room and had those kids making bows and, and what, what were they called? mobiles and uh, paintings, all sorts of things. It was just fabulous to watch them. I remember the day you did the mobiles and I saw all these kids walking around with these sticks with things hanging from them. It was just really great. Next. Oh, there's Marilyn there too. Go ahead, Thor. So one of the days was Mother Day. So this woman has her children come here and some of them live there because she can't really afford to feed them. Uh, so they stay at the at the Casa Guatemala, but she comes and visits them and brings some of her other children. So this was great the, the, on the parents' day. It was just great to see the few mothers th that showed up. It was a celebration of mothers. And the next one, too, is I just loved this one. She was so, her face just glowed, but that little boy at the bottom, he, look at those eyes. They are so big. And he was just smile, smile city. And he just ran around, and it was just a part of feeling the excitement and the exuberance of what it means to be that, that, that open. Next. Some of these are just pictures I took to, well, because I picked, took pictures of Kevin. There are hundreds of pictures that Marilyn has and Lisa has. And we will put together a video eventually. That, I'm showing you that even though I look absolutely horrid. Um, <laughs> But this little girl literally was like on my back for like half an hour. And she just, she just was just love pouring out to me, as was this little boy. Um, and I think you can tell that I'm sort of crying here. One of the things that happened in Guatemala was, and it didn't happen last time I went with my son, a lot of the kids were asking me, where is Nora? And I wasn't expecting it. And the one time it happened, it was all a bunch of kids at a table having lunch. And I just walked over to say hi. And they all kind of turned and looked at me. And then one of them said, where's Nora? And they were all like, yeah, where's Nora? And um, Scott, was, Scott turned and saw that they'd asked me that. And I just looked at him, Scott uh, Anderson, because we had two Scots, Scott Anderson and Scott Gibb, who ended up being Scatu. Scott too. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, and when they asked me, it wasn't that I got sad. I didn't. I just went, <laughs> I gave an answer that is so metaphysically incorrect. I said, hey, she's in heaven. And I pointed up because it made sense to them. And they all got like this somber quietness. They were all like, and then somebody said, how? And I said, well, and I, as I said it, somebody was uh, obviously speaking Spanish to tell them what I was saying, that she had a car accident. And this little girl looked at me and she just went, meaning, did you cry? And I said, yes, it's very sad. And um, I think kind of for the rest of the week, all of those kids were so re very respectful around me. They'd constantly come up and hug me and, you know, but, but it wasn't a sad thing for me. And they were getting, I think, a good lesson in how do you move through it? How do you move on? I was getting a good lesson in how do you move on? So next picture. So this is everybody sitting, waiting for the dance to begin. Um, not everybody, because obviously it's just a handful of us, but next. This is the kitchen that you all um, contributed to. How about that? Yes, give yourselves a round of applause. So that's Aiden Pena. That's uh, Jose and Scott's nephew. And this room was god-awful, and you had to eat lunch there. You guys didn't even know, because years ago it was much worse. So we did a whole new floor, painted. There's the green. 
that everybody painted. Um, and then the, I don't have a picture of the kitchen, but there were stoves, new stoves put in. And it, what you all did in supporting this is monumental. When we saw the stove they had, this tiny little stove, it was just ridiculous. Next. Is that it? No. So I put this picture in here because, yes, we were doing service. Yes, it was, it was very challenging. Yes, it was rainy. Yes, it was muggy. Yes, there were tarantulas and tons of mosquitoes and ants, ants the size of, like, children. <laughs> there, were, there were fish. There were, where were, what are those things called? Barracuda? No, what are they called? Piranhas. Ah, barracuda, piranha. There were piranhas in the water that would come up and bite at you. You know, which, which to me, I, I don't find that pleasant. <laughs> that was not fun. Uh, Jose was like, no, they're taking off the dead skin. I went, how do they know which is dead and which isn't? <laughs> so, but we took this beautiful, fun, fun excursion on, in this. And it was fun, even though Kevin did not have fun on this excursion. Because the, the, the canoe we were in at any second could have fallen over one way or the other in this little river. Of course, we found out the river was like this high. So <laughs> what was going to happen? You'd get wet. So this was a day after we'd done all of our volunteer service. We were done. We went on this trip. And it was just amazing. Marilyn was not in this picture because I don't think you can. Because she, she has her, brace, her, her cast on. So she couldn't do this walk we had to do to get to where we were going. So... Um, so, fun. So, it was fun. The trip was, you're going to ask me, was the trip fun? Yes, the trip was fun. Challenging can be fun. And I want to be clear about that. Challenging can be fun. Tired can be fun. I tell you, when you're so exhausted from playing the same song for 200 children for five hours, I mean, literally. First of all, I got a thing in my shoulder from it, from the guitar being there all day. Look for the good in everything. Sing it now. And then they all go, look for the good. It was, and then in Spanish, too, which I still... Perez bueno en todos. Something like that. Um, but I had to do all that. Can that be exhausting? Yes, but when you're at the end of that and you're so tired, you can't even think of picking up the guitar again. There's a fun quality to that. There's a, I have used myself up. I've used myself up to unlimited potential, and there's still more. So here's my last quote from my talk today, and this is by Calvin Coolidge. Nothing in this world can take the place of persistence. Nothing in this world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. <laughs> Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. Why do I end with that? Because I want to ask you all to be persistent this month. That in the face of everything you may see going on in our country, in the world, that you are, as it says here, you are determined and persistent in having fun, in seeing the good, in expressing the good, because we are nothing but a field of energy. And the energy you put into this field of energy moves it along. So what you focus on expands, and what you are willing, what you decide to look at and understand is paramount to how it's going to show up in your world. So I invite you this month to literally take the time, literally, Eric, take the time necessary to persistently and determinedly have fun. And you know what fun is? Fabulousness unfolding now. Yeah, good. So is that what you all want for this month? Fabulousness unfolding now. Say that with me. Fabulousness unfolding now. And so it is. Namaste.